<laughs> um, I'm going to start off with, uh, well, first of all, I thought I'd focus on folk music. I find this session, this this music session, pretty eclectic. But I'm going to do primarily folk music tonight, and um, that sort of brings up the question of what exactly is folk music. And to me, folk music reflects the aspirations, concerns, and worries of ordinary folk throughout the centuries, uh, as well as today. And of course, it's always existed. So this first song that I'm going to do is. I would call it an epic song because it covers the role of the folk singer from the time of the Druids right the way through to the present day. Um, uh, so it's um, the consistent the consistent role of the folk troubadour or singer. And it's particularly English history, I'm afraid. Sorry for all you North Americans. Uh, and it goes from the time it's got uh, talks about Stonehenge through the Roman occupation, through the legendary Arthurian times, through the Norman invasion, through the Elizabethan era, and the Industrial Revolution, all in two, all in four minutes. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> Here you go. It's called the Minstrel, um, and it goes like this. Um, I sang my song in Glen and Heather to lose the tribes in times of war. I sang my song to paint the druid of mythic heroes in days of yore. But when the mighty Roman legions brought fire and sword unto our land, no more was heard the sound of singing. The legions still the harper's hand. I sang my song to noble Arthur and Guinevere, his fabled queen. I sang of songs of knightly valor and of the hallowed grail they see. But when the bloody Saxon Reavers claim plundering Albion's fair shore. They drenched our lives in blood and fire, and darkness filled the land once more. I sang my song at Hastings' battle to praise the deeds of Charlemagne. I sang of Arthur and of Roland That men remember their great fame I sang to rouse a sinking nation That king and man might never yield But when the battle cry was over We all lay dead on Hastings I sang my song to conquer loved one. I sold my voice to him who paid to sing his lady gentle love song, to lend his passion subtle shades. But when my silver throated praises at last did melt her heart a stone. And they both departed and left me there to sing alone. I sang my song at fair and market, a song much bawdier than before. Amid the pigs, the geese, and cattle, I sought to please. Once more. I sang to win applause and favour, songs of the cuckold and the whore. Though I gladly took their money, I missed the songs I'd sung before. 
I sang my song at times of anger. I found new purpose in my rhyme. At kings and queens, I'd point the finger and bid them see the nation's crime. How bitterly did I condemn them, all those who left the poor oppressed. But the time was not yet ripe for changes, and I hung at Tyburn with the rest. I sang my song in mill and coal pit, my voice all cracked with dust and fumes. I took my tune from the factory sirens. I took my rhythm from the rooms. But whether anybody listened or paid attention, I can't say. I couldn't stand the smoke she is, so I packed my bags and moved away. My voice grows tired, my eyes are weary, my aging memory nearly gone. I've sung my song for Lord and Lady. I've sung it to for the common man. But till there's no more time for singing, until we reach the story's end, I'll always find the strength within me to rise and sing my song again. Like an epic. The Met, quite yeah, an epic, yeah. It's, it's a fabulous song written by, um, written by, oh dear, I forget who it was written by now, written by two guys, somebody from England, and the first two verses were written by a bloke from New York. What about that? Um, here's something a little bit different. Um, one of the common things about folk music is that they tend to glorify things. Um, one of the things that was often glorified, and we, uh, we've come to see things different like these days, is war. And uh, so this is a song, not about war so much, but about the military. And it's, um, it's an unusual song. When I first heard this, I thought, what's it about? Because it's, it's, it's called The Root of the Blues. And it's nothing to do with blues music. The blues in this song, the blues in this song are the uh, Royal Horse Guards. Uh, the blues were the Royal Horse Guards, a force originally raised by Cromwell, that was especially favoured by King George IV and featured prominently at the Battle of Waterloo. And it was comprised of wealthy young men, uh, clearly an attraction for unmarried women. Hence this song, which is all about women, sort of uh, following the men, following the, uh, following the, uh, the horse guards. And it's the root, when it calls the root of the blues, it means the root of the horse guards. And the root is when they're being mustered for action. And they were being prepared to go abroad to fight. And of course, it was all big gallant stuff about 10% of them came back home. Uh, here's the song of the root of the blues. It's really it's about the women following the men, following the, uh, following the men about. Here we go. And it goes like this. As I crossed over Salisbury Plain, it was a dainty fine sight, I behold all the lasses were crying, tearing their hair. Oh, the root has just come for the blues. Oh, the root has just come for the blues. Then each one home to their mothers to run, saying, My heart is undone, it is true. I'll pack up my clothes 
without more delay and boldly I'll march with the blues I'll boldly I'll march with the blues The landlord and the landlady walk hand in hand and so did a pretty girls too and which one pours a bottle of gin to drink a good health to the blues to drink a good health to the blues Our ship she is rigged and we all set sail and sweetly the French horns play too and each one sets up a loud bizarre success to King George and his blues success to King George and his blues They're as gallant young fellows as ever you'll see who will search body Britain all through when dressed in his majesty's suit, you'll agree There's none can compare with the blues There's none can compare with the blues As I crossed over Swords were in plain, it was a dirty fine sight, I behold, all the lasses were crying and tearing their hair, oh the root has just come for the blues, oh the root has just come for the blues. A song from the Collected by Cecil Sharp in 1909. Of course, war, uh, war is not all, uh, not all prancing around in fancy costumes on horses. There's some pretty bad sides to, uh, to war. So this next song is an anti-war song and uh, this is one of my favourite anti-war songs and it's not very commonly heard. Um, it was written by a lady called William, uh, Linda Kelly from, from Yorkshire and it, it, um, this song if you listen to the words carefully, there's four verses. And the first verse is all about World War One, And the second verse is all about World War Two, And the third verse is all about Vietnam. And the fourth, fourth verse is all about Iraq. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty, um, I don't know, concerning stuff, shall we say. Um, so here we go. We We stood in hell. As the bombs fell all around us Our bayonets were useless And death had found the boy We see him now His lifeless eyes are staring Another Flanders hero And his mother's pride and joy We feel no pain We've marched for many a day now Beyond La Guerre and Messina's Our mentiers at dawn When will it end? When can we come home to England? Our heads are full of killing And our limbs are weary worn This is the war To end all wars, they said This is the last The final call We'll never take This road again, they said But the truth makes lies of us all I heard no sound Not even one bird singing But I saw the plumes of gulfs and smoke That smelt the death and fear A young child cries But the others 
cannot hear her. Her small voice lost in innocence drowned out amongst the tears. Look at us now. We are fearful for our brothers, our sisters and our mothers. They look everything we've known. We plant our fields. Not knowing if tomorrow will bring the peace forever to our Hiroshima home. This is the war to end the wars, they say. This is the last, the final call. We'll never take this road again, they say. But the truth makes liars of us all. They came by night, by river at Dak Hango, through dark and deadly forest, seen with their stranger's eye at Tumorong. The battleground was bloody, a hundred brave Americans, each one too young to die, their shattered dreams. Betrayed by those who loved them, impoverished and empty, they struggled every day, homecoming sea. A million miles away now, when the neighbours will not listen, and they turn their face away. This is to end all wars, they say. This is the last, the final call. We'll never take this road again, they say. But the truth makes liars of us all. So it goes, this endless round of sorrow, from the ravaged streets of Najaf to the starving at Darfur, can we not see that when man abandons reason, the cause is lost, and no one knows what they are fighting for, how can it change? Will the anger ever lead us? Will the warlords drop their weapons? Will the conflict soon be done? Or will they reign? Their power overwhelm us And we have to face our enemy A generation on This is the war to end no wars, they said. This is the last, the final call. We'll never take this road again, they said. But the truth makes me like this. That when man abandons reason, the cause is lost and no one knows just what they're fighting for. Bravo. Pretty moving song in my opinion. <laughs> yes. After that, something a bit more upbeat. So this is another English song. This is um, 
This is a traditional folk song. It's a child ballad, actually. Um, dates back to 1719. And it uses a Playford tune from 1651. And it was very popular in Elizabethan times. It tells the tale of a randy monk willing to go to any length to get his holy end away. Um, he is, but uh, this, this song means a lot to me because my, two of my granddaughters are both 16 next month, next month or next few months. And he's trying to get his, this, this Randy monk is trying to get his holy end away with a 16 year old girl. But he's well and truly unglued by the shrewdness of the 16 year old prospective victim and his own enthusiasm. So here we go. Here's a, and it's a quite a quite a jolly sort of a tune, and uh, and of course, fortunately, the sixteen-year-old gets the gets the one up on the Randy Vicar in the end, which is always good, right? <laughs> Fancied a girl, sixteen years old, come begging to her in the middle of the night. Would he sleep with her till the broad daylight? To me, a fell out to play no deed. Oh no, said she, you know very well. If I do that, I'll go straight to hell. No, he says there is no doubt. For if you were in hell, I would whistle you out. To me, a fell out to play no deed. must bring so he went to running the money to fetch she thought on a scheme the fire to catch to be a fellow little aero so she got a sheet yes you know very well she hung it up in front of the well he comes back and she let him in and it's oh dear love now let's begin to be a fellow little aero Coming behind the sheet, the friar did trip into the web he went. Ah, so the text to be a fellow, little AOD. And the friar called out, What a pitiful sound! Help, sweetheart, or I shall drown. She says, You could whistle me out of hell. Well, whistle your own self out of the world to be a fellow, little AOD. his money back again. No, she says, there is one matter. You must pay me for your foul my water. A foul out in the Said the friar, well, I never was treated so. And I never, never come back here no more. Off he went up down the street, dragging his bum like a new dipshit. To be a foul out in the This this has become a, a little bit of a a party piece for me. This one, I suppose. Uh, well, I don't do it that often. He's not from Birmingham. No. Um, this uh, this um, 
Last song, it's, uh, th th no one knows that it was written about, who wrote it rather, but it was probably written in about 1834 or 35. This was around the time that Shakespeare, uh, that uh, Shelley wrote Frankenstein, right? Um, when Shelley wrote Frankenstein, it was, um, she was writing about things that people were scared of in those days. What were people scared of in those days? They were scared of all sorts of simple things. Today, a lot of people are scared of artificial intelligence, for example. They were worried about artificial intelligence. In the mid 1800s, they were scared about steam. Steam was the new form of new power. That's what they were worried about. So this really is almost a cyborg horror story. Possibly the first use of the possessed limb motif that will become common in 20th century horror movies. So, as I said, the ballad focuses on the fear of new technology, which at that time was steam. So in a way, sort of as a proto steampunk theme in a pre-Victorian era song. And um, so it's an old song, but when you hear it, you'll think that's never, that's never an old song, but it's based on an old song. And a lot of the words and the concepts are from the old song, but it's been modernized a bit. So here we go. And it's called the steam armed man. It's all about a guy who, all about a guy who loses his arm in the battle of Waterloo and he feels less of a man than he should be. So he, he makes a steam arm that attaches to his shoulder and is powered by steam, but he can't control it. Right? <laughs> so here we go, the steam arm man, the ballad of the steam arm man. Well, I'll tell you a tale, and I'll tell it true. How I fought in the battle of Waterloo. I took a bullet to the chest, it was as big as a boulder. Threw my left arm off, clean off to the shoulder for well, a man with just one arm. He's the real man. I swore I would have two arms. I swore I would have two hands. So I hammered and I stitched and I welded like a charm. It was leather and steel, my new steel arm. I'm the steam armed man. Steam armed man. You better lock your doors, because here comes the steam arm man. I'm the steam arm man, steam arm man. And I thank the devil, yes I thank him, for making the steam arm man. Well I had an angel on one shoulder, and on the other sat Satan when I unlocked my door. My pretty wife sat there waiting when she saw my awful face. Her eyes filled with tears, but when she saw my steam arm, her heart filled with fear. She called me a monster. Well, she called me a fool. And with my good right arm, I caressed her and I cooed. And my left arm was slowly up over her head and my steam arm came down and it killed my wife dead. I'm the steam armed man, steam armed man. You better lock your doors, cause here comes the steam armed man. I'm the steam armed man, steam armed man. And I thank the devil, yes I thank him, for making the steam armed man. Well, they call the police to come and take me away. I've killed 24 policemen on that day. Well, they sent me to the courthouse to pay my dues. You know, I killed all the lawyers. I killed the, I killed the jury too. I had an angel on one shoulder and on the other sat the devil. But the judge stood up and he raised his gavel with my good right arm. I pleaded and I prayed that my steam arm came down on his gavel and his head. I'm the steam arm man, steam arm man. You better lock your doors because here comes the steam arm man. I'm the steam arm man, steam arm man. And I thank the devil, yes I thank him, for making 
Okay. Dusty man. Make sure you wonder what's going to happen to this. What could possibly happen to this guy? Well, they threw me in a cell. Steam armor door. But it didn't take my steam armor on to break down the prison wall. I had an angel on one shoulder, and on the other sat the devil. As I wept and I raged and I cursed and caused more trouble, well they hung me high with the tolling of bells. They threw my body in a ditch and damned my soul down to hell. And when Satan looked upon me with his eyes so very red, my steam arm came down on his baldy little head. I'm a steam arm man. Steam arm man. You better lock your doors, cause here comes the steam arm man. I'm a steam arm man. Steam arm man. And I'll thank the devil, cause I'm fancy. You better lock your doors, cause here comes the Steve Arm Man. Yes, the Steve Arm Man, Steve Arm Man. And I thank the devil, yes, I thank him, and thank him. The Steve Arm Man. Steam Arm Man from 1834. Awesome. 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 Great start. That's the first